Hey, what's going on guys? Adaptations here, and today I think I've got an interesting video for you. So last week in the old school Q&A livestream, the mods were talking about potential quests and easy modes to introduce people into raid. They were also talking about potentially releasing a theater of blood hard mode. While this is really cool, I think it really overshadowed a potential huge update for the old school RuneScape economy. Before we get into the video, I'd like to ask that if you enjoy my take, to please smash the like button for me. It helps send my videos to bigger audiences who may also enjoy the content. It is the fastest and easiest free way to help the channel out. Also, if you're looking for fellow scapers to chat with, feel free to hang out in my friends chat in-game or in my Discord outside of the game. I'm adding everyone who joins my friends chat until my friends list is full. Once the clan rework comes, we plan to create our own clan, and so far everyone has been really kind and easy going. We're trying to keep building a very supportive community. I'll leave the links to my Discord, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch in the description below if you're interested in following any of them. I'll also announce the winner of the YouTube Bond giveaway at the end of this video. So during the stream, the topic of gold and item sinks came up. Mod Sween was talking about players being upset about changing their bank value every time they log in, and players wanting more and more gold, but more importantly, item sinks. They spoke about gold sinks they've done in the past, including the dual green attacks, which has removed tons of gold from the game, as well as the construction skill being intended as a gold sink in itself. However, when it comes to item sinks, they mentioned that it's not as easy to implement and that the old item sink the game had was death. However, with the DDoS attacks and potential server attacks, this isn't a great solution as it just feels unfair. They added the death coffers where you can add items to pay for deaths, which is a small sink, but then they proposed what I think is a really cool idea. And I'll let you guys hear it from the mod's mouth themselves. But anyway, maybe it's both. Maybe you need a GE tax and item sink. So like, you tax the GE and you take, say, 0.1% from every purchase. And that gold is brought, you know, used to be spent on items. Um, as in, the items get deleted, the player selling the item still gets the gold for its current value or what it would actually sell for. <sighs> yeah. It's, it, this is a, it's a complex problem, right? In, <laughs> I mean, an MMO economy is a comp very, very complex system. A lot of it's based on perception rather than actual reality sometimes, too. These are all factors that really you, you need an economy designer on the team. That's something we've talked about as well. Like, how can we bring somebody like that on the team who can help with this sort of problem? The problem is people don't vote for taxes in one case. Uh, but also the Grand Exchange only narrowly passed. Like the Grand Exchange was controversial. In fact, it failed originally the first time it was ever called. It was turned into the trading post. So, <laughs> you know, it's not an easy thing to say, let's tax the GE because it's not been taxed for so long. People don't like losing money. It's not exactly a positive experience. I think it is one of those things that sort of has to be there from the start. Uh, so, you know, it would be enforcing it. To be honest, if we had a 0.01% tax onto it, no one would probably even notice. <laughs> like, that's the, that's the yeah. scale of it. If we did it low, all it needs to be is a low tax. So basically what they're talking about is creating a GE tax that taxes every transaction at 0.01% and then taking the money to buy items off the GE at their current traded value and then just delete the items from the game forever. I found this to be a very interesting concept. I think that if done well, this could be good. The questions, however, that must then be asked though, which they go further into after this, is what do you sink? Do you only sink certain items? Or do you have it be RNG, where there's like a 1 in 200 chance of you getting the gold for your items, but they don't make it to another player on the other end of the trade? And then those items just get wiped from the game no matter what it is. So maybe you're wiping an Elijah, or maybe you're wiping 1k Raynars from the game. It's really hard to tell. Now the biggest response that I saw to this in the chat is, wouldn't players just not trade their higher value items anymore on the GE? I think this is a fair point, but it really depends on the tax rate that they settle on. People will pay for convenience, and if the tax is low enough, they could have already implemented it and you might not even know. For example, if I'm using my calculator correctly here, a 1 billion gold item like the Ellie gets taxed at 1% and that's a 10 mil hit. People obviously would rather keep the 10 mil because that's hours of time, right? But what Kieran said on the stream is it's going to be a 0.01% tax. Now if you use the calculator and multiply by 0.01, that is a 1% tax. 
So to get to a 0.01% tax, you need to add two extra zeros. This would effectively mean that the GP you lose by selling a one bill item on the GE is around 100k. It would take you so much more time to find a legitimate buyer on the forums, meet each other in game somewhere, and sell to them to avoid the 100k, that you could have instead done a Vorkath or Zolrkill kill and been fine. Or maybe even part of a Rune Dragon trip in the time saved and easily have made that money back. The important thing to remember is that this is going to be a volume tax, where the more players who use the GE, the more the tax slowly accumulates as they skim minuscule amounts off the top, which is kind of what major transaction processing companies do for credit card transactions as well. This might affect some of the flippers, and especially flips on certain items, as it would narrow the margins a bit. But if a tax this small gets in your way, then I think you are probably flipping the incorrect items anyway and should be aiming for higher margin. I really love this idea and I hope they end up implementing it. Another item sync that Jagex has done in the past was the Well of Goodwill. For those that don't know, this is a well they opened in Varak that you could sync items into and they had a leaderboard for those who threw in the most items. And for every one mil donated, Jagex donated one dollar to charity. Now in RuneScape 3 you got a title for hitting certain breakpoints, but those don't exist in old school. I do think some cosmetic rewards for being charitable would be an easy way to get people to donate as well as sinking items and gold from the game. And I personally would really, really like to see this come back. That's my thoughts on this topic, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think the GE tax and item sync is a good idea? Would you like to see the Well of Goodwill come back? Or do you think you have an idea that would help sink some of the items and hopefully help some of the gear start to appreciate again? Please let me know down below. I'm super interested in hearing all of your thoughts. This morning I also went ahead and rolled the random comment picker. So it looks like a hobbit or known in game as no 2k cause life is the winner of the bond from the last video. So if you happen to see me online, go ahead and PM me. We can meet up and I'll hand you uh, your bond. Alternatively, if I see you log in, I will also message you and I will try to give you this bond ASAP. This Saturday, I'll be giving away a bond for those who are in the Twitch stream, as well as giving away a bond in Discord. To enter the Twitch giveaway, you just need to be in the stream when I'm ready to do the giveaway. For the Discord giveaway, just put your RSN in the channel that says giveaway. I'll roll the Discord winner Saturday night and announce the winner next Friday in my video. I would also like to mention that I got approved to have YouTube members exactly one year after starting my YouTube channel. This is an easy and fairly inexpensive, in my opinion, way to help monetarily support the channel if you would like. I don't want anyone to feel left out if they can't, but I do appreciate everyone that may do this. If you are interested, just click the join button down below. You'll see the different tiers and prices and whatnot. Supporting me in this way just means that I get to work less side jobs and less hours at work and stay at around the same money, which ultimately means that I have more time to both play RuneScape and make RuneScape content. That's all that I have for today's video though. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my perspective. If you enjoyed the content, whether you agree or not, please subscribe and feel free to tell me your opinion. I'd love to see you all in future videos or streams, but if not, that's fine too. I still hope you all have a good week and normally I'd wish you better RNG than I have, but I finally got the beaver pet at 37 million XP. Bye.